accelerating development. I understand that when we are incarnated on earth, we have certain limitations in our spiritual development. Is it possible to burst this, to go further than the limitations which are set for us? The guide. Oh, yes. You cannot, however, accomplish everything in one incarnation. That would be impossible. But you can certainly break the limitations. That happens quite often when one follows this noblest of all paths. If a person really has the will, and if this will is put into practice, then the limitations will recede and much more can be accomplished in one life. What you can accomplish in one incarnation by taking this path would perhaps need 20 otherwise. That is the difference. This example should give you an idea of your power to break the limitations. At one time you told us that it was easier to work on this path here on earth than in the spirit world. Yet we know that our loved ones are developing too. They too are working for their self-realization and are helped by our work on ourselves. Could you explain how this works? The Guide Growth and self-development can, to a degree, take place in every sphere of being. But where the hindrances and obstacles are greatest, there growth can be most effective, provided the person in question so desires. The deeply embedded problems are not called forth without hindrances or obstacles. They cannot manifest, and therefore you lack awareness of them. Without such awareness, you cannot grow out of them. In spiritual spheres, where you live without your physical body, you are in a life where you do not encounter the hindrances caused by matter. One can still grow and develop to a degree without this obstacle, but certainly not to the same degree as on earth. Matter is one constant hindrance. It is one resistance. We talked about psychological resistance, but that is only one aspect, one small fragment of resistance as such. Earth life, life in matter, is one resistance. If you had no resistance whatsoever, you could not live at all. Yet, when you resist too much, you cripple yourself accordingly. And if the degree passes a certain limit, you cannot live either. Life on earth requires a certain equilibrium between not too much and not too little resistance. The same thing is true of the will. Will is a force that overcomes the resistance of matter, the resistance of separation. If the will is too strong, it is harmful. And if it is too little, it will not sufficiently overcome the resistance of matter. This is how you can grow much faster because of the resistance. By learning to go with the resistance, you develop inwardly to just the right degree to the proper balance. Needless to say, this cannot be learned by rules and regulations and laws and doctrines you absorb with your brain. This is an inner feeling that develops out of such a pathwork as you are doing. It is intuitive, not learned. You grow to fit into the right stream of the particular degree of resistance you need. It is not the same for everyone. Each person has a personal vibration or frequency, the sum total of his or her entire being, outer and inner. According to this personal vibration, the resistance has to fit, as it were, to the general resistance of matter. To the degree that you live productively and harmoniously, your vibration will be in harmony with the general resistance of matter. That is why development on earth proceeds so much faster.
Can you tell us why the influx of the new Christ consciousness energy has accelerated the process of development? The guide. Because the energy is extremely strong. The energy expresses the highest caliber of consciousness, of purity, of love, of development. It is of such high frequency that it can be beneficially experienced only by souls and personalities who are compatible with it. Otherwise, the same energy creates crisis, negative manifestations. If you stem against it, if you fear its influx and contract against it, it will appear to be a negative force. Yet it is the highest, most potently beautiful, loving, and wise force. This shows again that the same thing can be experienced in entirely different ways. It depends on the consciousness, on the expectations, and on the outlook of the individual in question.